Okay, I did some more research on my reading of the zero point energy. Remember that I said when I shake this up, I get zero point counterclockwise above it, zero point clockwise, zero point, there it is, below it. And I was really curious, this didn't sit right with me because zero point is one entity. I didn't know I had two values to it. So I was really curious as to whether I was actually reading something else. And was surprised at what I found because I thought, well, maybe I'm getting a tracking field because a tracking field, I always get positive to it unless it's the double antennas. And so I thought, well, the one way to test this is to take the, uh, <clears throat> my little cone here and because when I was declaring tracking or uh, zero point energy, I might have been initiating a tracking field by that command. And one thing I did learn about the tracking fields is that they will disperse an anion charge into whatever they're tracking. And that kind of marks it as their, it's theirs. So other tracking fields do not, do not go into this. And what I discovered is that this indeed is what I was after. So I'm going to initiate... I'm going to get the zero point energy here, and I'm going to put this under it, and I get absolutely nothing because that little bugger there is tracking zero point energy. That thing is tracking the zero point energy. And let me turn this off. What is happening then is when I said zero point energy, and I've never seen this before with anything else, when I said zero point energy, the earth itself was sending up a tracking field and and uh, hitting the zero point energy. I've never seen that before, and I've never seen it with anything else. And in order to double check this or triple check this, what I did is I took batteries, and on the negative side, the anions come off of it, negative ions, or negative copper ions are flowing out of the bottom side of it and I did the test again with the anions facing this thing and sure enough I got no tracking field from the bottom no tracking field anywhere because the, it was not a reading of the zero point energy I declared zero point energy and the earth itself rose up as a tracking field and 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 hit it so fascinating I never I didn't know, never knew it would do something like that. And let me take a real quick aside here because it is fascinating that zero point energy accumulates around the random chaotic uh, pattern of the water. And this brought to mind something that I saw on YouTube about a gentleman who made himself a, they called it a perpetual motion machine, but basically it was something like this. This is a little more complicated than what he had, but on the one side he had a motor that was hooked to a to wheels and the wheels turned other wheels and and kept all these wheels going in a random pattern and at the other end of it he had a generator and because of the random pattern the random arrangement of the wheels and i don't even know if he had some going clockwise counterclockwise or whatever but the random pattern what he claimed was that the output was greater than the input and it's possible that I've heard that zero point energy will accumulate around the energy will actually go into things that move, but I'm finding it move the things that move in random and chaos. I also heard of another, um, a, like a prepper community that was off the grid and somebody asked about how in the world they ran this thing and they were shown, a, and this is just uh, what I'd heard, is they were shown a closet that was full of these wheels. And it's possible that they had done the same thing, that they had figured out the right arrangements for the maximum zero point accumulation into the wheels and had a similar setup, that the generator on one side and then the, the random wheels, all these different sizes to accumulate the zero point energy and then a generator on the other side. So that's for another research, but that is fascinating that zero point energy will accumulate where there is random, random and chaotic patterns which a person may be able to put into wheels and turn it into electrical uh, up, yeah, electrical system. Okay, the next thing, I got had a chance the other day to visit my father, and I was talking to him about um, their testing that they were doing in Arizona, and he said, well, wait a minute, he said, let me get these. The guy who was doing the testing in, the, in Arizona had made my dad a copy of his. So these are identical to what what they were using out in the desert. And what this is, 
This is stainless steel rod, probably got it from a hardware store or from Home Depot. This is 3 16 thickness, or 5 millimeter for you, you who are metric. And the important thing is that from here to here, that's 14 inches. Now this piece here that they have for, for rotating here, this is actually the core out of a, of a ceiling light. Um, I've changed out a lot of lights and we've always thrown these away and never, never had a use for them. But the hardware store would have these also. A person can, I see online, people also get PVC uh, pipe that's big enough for your hands to be comfortable in. And they put a cap on each end and drill a hole for this to go in. And then when it comes out the bottom, just curve it enough so it doesn't, doesn't come sliding out on you. But anyhow, 14 inches, and I went and I took these, and these were detecting everything. Whereas mine, my, my rods were at 20 inches, and I could barely get them to, to read at all. These are at 14 inches, and I could even over stationary water. Over stationary water, let's see, we're going for, yeah, let me get a good grip on these. Going for the water, going for the water, going for the water. There we go. I even tried it over the chair at home and it, and it worked. It's like, what in the world? 20 inches doesn't work. 14 inches works great. So what I did is I took my my 20 inch rods and snipped them off to 14 and they work a whole lot better. And this one here, I just snipped it off. This is just coat hanger wire. But then I thought, you know, they almost seem to need more weight out here. So then I thought about instead of snipping it off, just bending it over. And this works too. A person can actually take a coat hanger, bend it over at 14 inches, and then just let it come back. But I would, wherever this end is, uh, tape it up. Electrical tape. Something so it doesn't snag on everything. But 14 inches seems to be the key. And these don't have to be made out of stainless steel. You can make them out of copper, brass, metal, steel. Stainless steel, though, because it's so stiff, has a nice slide here. They really rotate very, very easily. So that was a fascinating discovery. And then the last thing that I that I discovered, which was very, very fascinating, and let me move this out of the way and bring out my little cartoon here. When a person goes out with their rods going looking for water, and here's the water under the ground, the rods, depending upon the length of them, will put out a higher velocity of a tracking field. And this is the natural tracking field of bugs and birds and fish. And if the rods are long, longer, the, the tracking field will shoot over what you're after and then it will come back. And the fascinating thing is that it will come back and it will not, it will not go down here. It will actually hit right here. Because if you have a tracking field, let's say, let's forget about the fact that it's going beyond it. If this tracking field went down this way, you would have a hard time figuring out, especially if this is really deep, you'd have a hard time figuring out where to drill. So what happens is the tracking fields go down to here, this point right here. Because remember we said that there are bands of gravitation and they're like fibers, fibers of gravitation. The reading for the water gets into the bands, into the fibers, and comes up, and the tracking field will track it right to this point here, so that way you know where, when you're directly above it. As a matter of fact, um, I was looking for gold, and found behind my house, about 200 feet behind my house, there was a strong reading of gold coming out of the ground, but it must be really, really, really deep, because as I'm tracking it with a pendulum, the thing is moving. And I'm actually getting about three feet in each direction that this thing is moving. So I assume that it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet down in the ground and that the gravitational bands are, are just slightly moving. And so this signal is also moving slightly because of the depth of it. And it's possible a person might be able to, using a pendulum or something else, determine the actual distance of the move to determine the depth of the object that you're tracking. But it is fascinating that the pendulums, or the, uh, the, the rods, as you're getting closer, they will overshoot and they will come back and they will hit at the ground. The other thing that was fascinating that I did not expect is as you move closer, 
And as you're tracking this thing, when the tips of those rods get into that band of signal, the tracking field stops completely. And that's where this torque effect comes in. That is very, very fascinating. As a matter of fact, let me, we're going to get some water here. And I can actually, humans can do this. As a matter of fact, it's very, very easy. The thing is just to track it. I'm going to use my finger for the, the rod. Less velocity. We're going for the water. And the field is going down, down there. Okay. I get my hand over it. And there's no field because of the gravitational bands and fibers my hand is now in the fiber it has nothing no more to track it doesn't have to track it's found what it's after but I find that interesting because once in there the tracking field stops because this is the signal that it's looking for this is what it has been tracking so interesting discoveries the other day doing my dousing research, I went out behind the house and the first thing, of course, that I wanted to work with is to see what, what I could do for finding gold. And what I did is, since I've been for 20 years swinging a pendulum, I just held my hand out to send out the tracking field. And I said gold, and I got a hit. And of course, the first thing it went to behind my house is that one strong field that's coming up out of the ground. And I had said uh, earlier that, that I thought it was... Uh, the field that moves uh, probably related to the depth of the the gold or, or um, and a, a possibility that a person could actually figure out the movement to figure out how deep the thing was but come to find out that this field that was moving uh, is a an anomaly for dousing I'm gonna call it a dancer because it dances around the place you know and, and this particular one behind my house is pretty big covers about a three-foot area and I found them for silver, I found them for copper, and I'm sure there, there are other ones. But they're, they're an anomaly. It, it doesn't indicate there's gold there. There's something else. I don't know if it's related to a ley line. Other dowsers have complained about these things being uh, frustrating. And I'm really surprised with how many of these are out there, these dancers, that no matter how far down you dig, you're not going to find anything. It's a, it's a moving field. It's, it's not... It's not a normal field, and uh, <laughs> it's going to take more research to figure out what in the world they are, but they are. there's a lot of them out there. So I went beyond where the, the dancer was, and the next thing that I came to, I had a, fee, uh, a signal sent me down a, a deer trail, and uh, it was kind of humiliating to find this, but I got a strong gold reading, and it went to a pile of deer poop in, in the middle of the deer trail. I thought, what in the world? So I checked the, the deer excrement that was there, and it was high in gold ions, silver ions, and molybdenum. Now, we live near, as a matter of fact, my house is on the, uh, the edge of an ancient lake bed called Lake Agassiz. And the, the lake bed of Lake Agassiz is very high in gold and silver and molybdenum. And it's very, uh, the silt that was left over is, it makes extremely uh, fertile farmland. But everything that comes out of there is high in, in gold, silver, and molybdenum. Well, here I find this bird poop, or not the bird poop, but the deer poop. And, and there were other piles of poop on the trail too, but it was just this particular pile was high in gold, silver, and molybdenum. And so it's probable that that meal that that, that, that deer had eaten uh, was probably corn that was grown in the Lake Agassiz silt bed for it to have those minerals in it. So then I went looking elsewhere and I got a strong reading that was going to the sand, pile, the sand pit behind my house. I've lived in the same house for 30 years and it was coming from the sand. So... I followed the field to where to where it was in the sand and it went to a particular spot and I looked and if I looked just right I could see one microscopic flake of gold glistening on the top of the sand. I thought, well that's fascinating. I've lived here for thirty years and I've never realized that that the gold was back was there. And then I went and uh, to check for another one and two feet over was another one, another glit of gold. And this is the old sand bed, 
sand dunes from Lake Agassiz, so a lot of those the gold and silver and stuff got blown in with the sand, and it's microscopic in there. And I thought, well, this is fascinating that I've never really realized this stuff was there, and I got down close to it and analyzed the, the speck, and sure enough, it was it was gold. So I wasn't being misled or anything on that. But then I realized that if there was a gold speck here that was on the top of the soil, a gold speck two feet over that was on top of the soil, that I was only getting the ion reading, the tracking field was going to the ion reading of the gold itself. I was not getting the uh, anything that was buried. My body was not picking up anything that was buried. And I thought, well, wait a minute, this is... This is not what I'm what I'm trying to do here. So instead of giving it the, the tracking field to give it the command for gold, I said gold pillars. And I was totally shocked with what happened because when I gave it the command for gold pillars, it detected then the, the, the tracking, the dousing pillars that were coming up and the air when I tested it was full of gold because all the little gold microscopic flower gold specks that were in the soil were now reading in the air. And I'm glad I was on my knees when I, when I was doing this reading because I almost fell over because suddenly the air was filled with threads of gold. And I thought, I've been here for 30 years and I never knew there was specks of gold, much less this gorgeous threads of gold that were in the air in the columns, the dousing columns, and I was just flabbergasted <laughs> with the beauty of what was there. And of course, I couldn't see it with my eyes, but I could detect it with the the um, the pendulum. And of course, you know, I could tell myself logically that this is just the the um, the pillars of what's in the earth. But the beauty of what I was seeing was just astounding, and it was really an eye opener because. How many of us go through our lives never seeing the beauty that's right in front of us? But this also brought up another issue, was these pillars. I had been testing too uh, to see the anomaly because I found out that when in my testing that, that these pillars, if you gave a verbal expression of skepticism saying these are not real or this, is, this will not work, suddenly these things will disappear. So here I am uh, testing these threads of gold that are in the air, and I said, this is not real, and they disappeared. And I said, okay, this is real. And I gave it the command for the, the gold again, and back again I could read the, read the, uh, the gold that was in the air. The, the, the uh, dousing fields were picking up. Now this this was been an interesting test because I thought, well, okay, I have an orb that I work with, and by holding my hand like this, the orb will actually move into it. It's an 11-inch orb. It's high in hydrogen, and it has a positive charge to it. And I went to check to see if I could read the, the, uh, the dousing field that was on top of that, the pillar, and it read as an orb. And then I gave it the command saying that this, this is not real. And it's still red. But this is interesting. All the dousing fields will disappear if I give a verbal command of doubt. But when I gave the verbal command of doubt, it did not disappear over the, the orb. So then I went back and I tested a, a dancing field. And I did the same thing. And, I, and when I gave the verbal expression, this is not real, the field was still reading over the dancer. So... That, that let me know that the dancing field, the dancer is a different sort of anomaly, just like an orb is a different sort of anomaly. But the thing is then that these, uh, the dousing fields, if you remember on the matrix, when you see the, the picture of the computer screen of the matrix, it's all these letters that are cascading downward. And what this is, when you see the computer screen of the matrix, this is all the information that goes into making the things that are actually exist. And if you look at the matrix, if I remember right in the movie, um, 
the guy who was watching the screen, he could look at it and, and figure out what these things were. But if, if you and I looked at it, we couldn't make sense out of it. And Neil couldn't make any sense out of it. And that's what the, the dowsing pillars are. They're the, we're in a three-dimensional matrix view like that. And when somebody gives a verbal expression of unbelief, it's like turning the monitor off. You can't see anything. And this explains another reason why when, uh, when that test was set up by that atheist and the dowsers came in, he had done enough expressions of unbelief that the, the uh, dowsing fields were not there. And these dowsers, not knowing that the place had been contaminated with unbelief, and skepticism came in and tried to find the fields and there was nothing there because the matrix screen had been shut off because of the verbal expression of unbelief. But by a verbal expression of belief, it starts up again. You can think the belief of this will work, but it doesn't contradict the verbal expression of unbelief. It takes a verbal expression of belief to contradict the verbal expression of unbelief. So if those dowsers had gone into that tent where the test was being held and said, this is real, this works, and then gone for the water, they could have probably gotten a reading off of what they were after, but they didn't realize that the place had been contaminated. Also, when testing for water, you can test for water itself, or you can test for hydrogen or oxygen, because Water is a high concentration of hydrogen and oxygen, so the, the, the matrix, uh, the pillars, the columns, will have water in it, it will have hydrogen and oxygen in it, so it gives you an option as far as what you're going for. Now, speaking of unbelief, I need to make a distinction, because the tracking fields, and these tracking fields come off of everything that's out there. If it has a yeah, if it's organic, it has at least 20% carbon in it. It will produce a, car, a, a tracking field. And the tracking fields will go for a genetic match, a cation charge, uh, a element that you may be deficient in, or something you give it a cognitive uh, command to find. And these tracking fields do not shut off with a verbal expression of unbelief. But those poor dowsers that were in that tent, they were sending out the tracking fields, but the columns were not there because the columns do disappear with the unbelief. So the tracking fields, and all of us produce these. You know, it doesn't take, you don't have to be special to have this coming off. It comes off of rocks. It comes off of rocks if they have enough carbon. It comes off of wood. It comes off of animals. It's, uh, it's very ubiquitous. And if you could see the tracking fields that are in the air, it would be like cobwebs. It'd be... <laughs> awfully confusing now I see online a lot of people have been using dowsings to contact uh, spirits and I do not recommend this at all because I've had enough dealings with uh, deceptive spirits to where I realize that that's not safe um, other people use it to uh, to get into their subconscious now you have to be careful because sometimes a person's subconscious will will try to make itself more important than it is and actually try to appear as a spirit or another field because the subconscious can be deceptive. But if you're using it for tracking, like for gold or for a lost object, you know, then you're okay because the matrix field itself, if you look at that computer screen of what the matrix looks like, it's very confusing. But oftentimes the subconscious can actually decipher those fields. And so if a person is tapping into the subconscious to decipher those fields, then you're okay. Then you're on safe ground. But if you're trying to predict the lottery numbers or if you're trying to communicate with the dead, then you're really getting into getting yourself into trouble. But for deciphering the matrix, yes, I would, I would recommend that you, uh, if you wanted to ask your your. Uh, pendulum or ask your dowsing rods yes and no questions as far as the location of the of the dowsing columns it, you know that that's you're still in the safe zone the next thing I want to talk about is proximity because when I did my research with the crazy organite discovery I was using cones like this and for a basic cone 
like this, you're basically uh, working within about two block area because of the distance and because the tracking field or the collector field forms here and the tracking field comes out depending upon the length of the device that you're using. Now I did in one case, I actually got a 700 mile tracking uh, for my wife. I was 700 miles away from her in the house and put uh, a cloth over this that had her DNA on it and it tracked her back to the house but the the physics there was the her, our house since we've been in it for 30 years has a lot of her dna in it so it was a a really a hot easy target for this thing to find even at that distance but for the most uh most cases about two blocks is what you'll get off of a device like this but what happens is with the tracking fields if you have a longer taller cone or a taller rod the length of it will increase the velocity of the field that's coming out of it so it will cover a larger territory if it's searching for something. And this is where hand position comes in because if you're here and you got your arm out straight the collector field will form here and like a sniper rifle you've got a longer barrel it will throw the field out a lot farther and it will cover the distance and it will find you the best match it can to what you're what you're sending it out for within the distance that you cast it it's like fishing with a long fishing pole where you can cast way out there and the farther you can cast out there the more likelihood you have of finding a fish so if you have your hands down at your side the collector field will form at your elbow and then it will shoot out or if you have your hands up like this it will form behind your hand and then it will shoot out so this is for long distance tracking this is for short distance tracking and or if you're moving up on a target and you feel like you're getting closer you can switch to this to to uh, stay at a closer range also i was experimenting and i have no conclusive uh results from this but uh, when you're using a rod that comes out the top of your hand the, the tracking field has to make a move and it did reduce the the velocity of the field coming out because it has to make that bend but a person can compensate for that just by keeping your arms straight and that would compensate for that turn and I did some experimentation with making uh, rods like this and these here's one here you can see how that how that fits and that way it keeps the field going directly down the hand and these are nice and I don't really think I have much of a of a preference either way it's just been fun to experiment with them now the other thing that I need uh, to mention is the difference between going for a an ion field or a column because the tracking fields will not enter into something that has a anion charge to it like the earth so that's why when I was tracking the, the gold behind my house, it was just getting the, what was on the surface because the tracking fields will not go into a anion charge. I had to give it the command for a column. Now, most people, when they're doing their dousing, they pretty much already understand, or at least their, their communication with the, when they're sending out the field, they know that they're going for the column. And these columns not only... Uh, contain what is below them but also what is above them so if you enter into a cave or you're in a house and you're tracking stuff you may find what's above you in that column and it's very hard to, de to decipher whether what you're after is above you or below you I did find an interesting anomaly I was doing some testing inside of a building and it had uh, cement walls and metal framework and as I was taking the rods and testing this building when it detected something in the next room it would actually send me through the doorway and I thought this was interesting but it turns out that because of the cement and because of the the metal that the walls themselves had an anion charge and so it wouldn't go through the walls it went through the doorway but I just thought that was really fascinating that it was actually showing me the path also, when you send out these fields, the tracking fields tend to stay at the same distance above the earth. They, they tend to find the, once you send them out, they tend to detect uh, what anion charge you're getting from the earth and stay at that level. So if you're sending it to, 
toward a hill or something over a hill it will actually go above the hill and then down and this is nature's way of allowing an animal like a wolf or something and a predatory animal they often have longer noses and they can just follow their nose and that tracking field will stay at the elevation of their nose as they go along but that's another interesting anomaly where in like cement and things it will actually lead you through the doorway but now to talk about the devices themselves, there really is no right way of doing this. I mean, you really have to try different things to see uh, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Um, one of the things that people do is they, um, they will add a witness, what they call a witness. And it basically it's a sample of what you're looking for. And sometimes people will take and they will put a canister somewhere in here where they can put like gold in like if they're going for gold, they'll put gold or they'll put uh, gold and um, crystals or sometimes they'll put it out on the tip or sometimes both. A person can actually take what you're after and just tape it to the, to the rod itself. A person can also, if you want, get a bottle of something and instead of using something like this, like this spring that I got from the hardware store, you can actually put the rod through the bottle put your witness in the bottle and let this be your handle another place you can put your witness is actually in your mouth because if you're giving the cognitive command and you put the witness in your mouth whether it be a gold ring or or whatever you're after your body has a better uh, sense of what it is that you're tracking and so I would recommend you try that also now this here is a, a double rod I mean it comes down and goes out I'm not too pleased with this this is more experimental but what happens is the velocity changes this puts out a higher velocity lower velocity and I'm thinking that there's a little bit of confusion once the fields get out there uh, one's going for something farther away one's going for something closer up it doesn't need the closer up the farther away is going to, to cover it so if I was to make these again, I would probably make these about the same to send out two tracking fields. And this spring is just from the hardware store. It makes it very, very easy to hang on to. Now, because one of the things that the, the tracking fields will try to get a genetic match to what you're sending out, this here is an iron rod, which is when it's doing a genetic matching, it's going to try to find iron. And this is one reason that a lot of people go to like brass because brass about all you're going to find out there is maybe some spent uh, uh, bullets, shells of uh, casings or stainless steel because there's very little out there that has stainless steel in it, maybe a knife or, or discarded utility or, you know, things like that. So uh, stainless steel and brass are about your best bets as far as like uh, putting out a pure... Uh, signal it's not going to get contaminated by the actual existence of the rod but I'm finding for myself especially because I take Ormus that my cognitive commands work quite well for these here's another one this is just made out of coat hangers and I twisted up coat hangers for the handles here a lot of people just hold these without don't have any things for them to sit into they just hold it up out like that but one of the easiest things to do is actually for the handles is to take a pen like this and just take the thing apart you can twist it yeah I make a liar out of me here you can twist it apart and then just dump the guts out take this end off and this part makes a good handle these are always being thrown away they're a dime a dozen and here one of the easiest ones that I made just took a coat hanger and stretched it out and made it so they can pivot in the hand and I thought well let's try to get a little fancy with it so then I took it apart here and then I slipped one of these pens on it and slid it down and put it in there and this actually works quite well I've actually been surprised with it and the other factor with these is the tips of these you want to make them so you're not going to poke anybody's eye out and so with a coat hanger you can just bend the tip over and this is not going to interfere with the field coming off of it it's not going to loop around you don't have to worry about that but that will keep people from getting their eyes poked out how do you like that for being cheap and easy and also I have a little bit of that forward canter with it because it's a lot easier with the hand. Now this works quite well. I'm very surprised and very pleased. Here's one. You can see the forward canter. I have the same length top and bottom. This is actually a five gallon bucket handle. This is the metal off of it. 
I popped it out of the side of the bucket, smashed it down flat, bent it over, and this works quite well. These here look like fancy dancy things. You can see I've got pens here. And this is one of the ones that shoots out the middle to keep the velocity going. This works well. And these are toaster forks. This is what they are, toaster forks. I just took the toaster forks, got these from Walmart, and I bent them, bent them out this way, and then put the, uh, the pen shaft alongside of it and then bent it back up and then bent it back in. A person can also take like a broom handle and cut off a length of broom handle and then drill into the ends of it. That would give you a fatter, fatter grip and I may go to and do that. But the one thing I would recommend is when you drill your holes, do not drill them any deeper than this here because you don't want this part here rubbing on the top of the broom handle. Drill your holes so that so that it comes down to about like that level on the shaft so that way this will be up and above the side of the broom handle itself so that way you don't have the friction of that the only thing that's going to be touching is right there at the tip that will be on the bottom of the drill hole so that's something to remember if you're using a, uh, a dowel or a broom handle to uh, don't drill down all the way just drill down enough so that it so that it sits like this so it sits above it and this this part here will not be dragging on the top of the handle itself here's another one this one here another this is a walmart fork for over the stove and i did the exact same thing with this took the handle bent it across bent it over and one of the nice things about this although this one's fairly long is they have this nice handle on here so you don't have to worry about poking anybody's eyeball out. And this works quite well too. And it's actually <laughs> kind of nice looking for considering how cheap it was to build it. So there's some basic ideas. Very inexpensive. And to, to practice with uh, dousing, if you're getting started, I found out one of the best things to do is to get like a bottle of water set on the ground and walk over it and see if you can feel it torquing in you're giving it the verbal command for water or hydrogen or oxygen see if you can feel it torquing in <coughs> excuse me or turn on a ceiling fan walk under it see if you can feel that column of cation copper that's coming down another thing that you can do is if you're outside and there are crows flying around give it the command for the crows and see if you can feel it torquing to where the crows are at because yesterday I was doing this and I, as the crows were flying, I could feel it torquing. And the torquing itself, think of a goose uh, or a swan, a long-necked swan. And this thing is flying along and it's sending out a tracking field, whether it's migrating or whether it's looking for food. That goose sends out that tracking field. And when, when it gets a little to the left of the tracking field, that goose will turn and it will pitch to the right to get back in line with that tracking field and so it is too that one of these things you could think of it as a long neck goose and you've got your tracking field out there and if you get off to one side or the other it's going to torque your, your hand is going to be like the brain of a, of a goose in flight and it's going to torque like that as you're moving toward your destination nothing mystical about it it's all natural but the thing is to try to try <laughs> Try to feel what the goose is feeling in its brain. Try to feel that torque. And of course, then once you get over something, and think of two, two geese that are flying, and they're right over the target, and they turn into each other and collide. Well, that's what happens when, the, when these things torque inward, as you're directly above what you're after. And then I've been using to make sure that I'm not just... Uh, making things up uh, gone after gold and it's been finding me rocks that are high in gold and I was really surprised that when they torque together I will get out my pendulum and I will then go down and I will look for the gold that's in the ground and I'm coming up with rocks that are have a fairly high gold content nothing no no pickers no no uh, you know shiny gold itself but rocks that have a fairly high gold content so I know that this is not uh, all subconscious or you know it's it's not um, uh, 
because it's easy for your mind to deceive you that you're only detecting the things that you see so it's kind of fun to go out there and try to detect the things you can't see or you can go out and look for water pipes if they have water in them or go for copper and see if you can find your electrical pipes is another electrical lines which is another thing that you can do you will see online that when people are asking their subconscious yes or no questions as far as the location or the depth of of what they're after that they will establish that one way would probably be a yes and if they turn the other way that that would be a no and you can see online there are a lot of videos about how people do that the other thing that's interesting is I've talked a lot about how these things will cross when you get over what you're after but if you're looking for like a uh, a pipe a water pipe or a water or a, a, a line power line underground if you're looking for the ends of them you may oftentimes find these things going outward and what it is is basically one goose is flying to, toward that end and one goose is flying toward that end and they will turn outward like that so it depends upon how you have your things uh, trained and how how you're using these as far as whether they go in or whether they go out but tons of videos on that um, also for the material uh, you know I've got you know we've got these rods here that I got from Home Depot we've got coat hanger rods that we use here these are the forks from from Walmart these are the uh, the uh, outdoor cooking forks from Walmart another place that you can uh, get nice metal is actually from yard signs or political signs because the metal that is used in those tends to be galvanized or fairly high in stainless so they don't rust away and so those are also a good source of material especially after election season there's a lot of that material left over that you can you can make devices with for free I always like free another thing is that we talked about the safety of these things and poking people's eyes out you can just take a bobber like this you can get it at a hardware store and just stick it uh, actually cork I'm saying bobber cork and just stick the uh, the metal in there because this will not disrupt the flow I mean it will just slightly but not not enough to worry about or they also sell uh, online and in, in the stores they sell foam bobbers that have a pin that you press in a wood pin that you press into the end of it those also work because you can just take the bobber and just press it onto your onto your metal so that also works because safety is an issue especially using around children you don't want to be out there trying to find something to have some kid running I mean that would ruin your day so bobbers work corks work bending the tips of them over work that works really well using these that are already bent over these work really well safety is an issue there